Hi folks, how are you doing? Again, I'm grateful for you uh, taking time to watch some of these videos. Uh, I know they could be made a little more interesting once I figure out how to do all that stuff. And friends have tried to do that. Um, one of the things that's like, every so often I really, really miss my, the old church I was going to. And like tonight I watched the pastor's last service and uh, it's really sad when you can presume the direction he's heading when they start out with Jesus and giving and then he goes obviously right to Paul but he talked about uh, uh, to resolve to follow Jesus that was the beginning of his sharing to resolve to follow Jesus and then he goes and starts teaching from Paul and I also know this is the time of the year when churches don't get money enough, and then that's the usual time. I've been there for multiple years, so I know what the routine is, and that they got to get uh, offerings up and get people to be recommitted to putting money into the thing, into the kitty. And but uh, you still miss being with the people. You still miss being in the building and stuff. And uh, it, it's just, uh, I guess, just kind of the way it is. So. Uh, tonight's thing that I'm talking about is Paul's testimony and uh, I've had a number of people who tell me or have made statements if Paul really was all off why did he go through everything that he did I mean if if Paul all the miracles the signs and wonders and if Paul was really in the wrong why, why did he keep doing what he's doing and I thought well I would like to have Paul answer that question and then I also would like you to think about, have you ever considered uh, Paul's testimony? Uh, when I've given my testimony, I was broken, I was falling apart, I, my life was a mess, and uh, there was no whoopee wow lights and beams and words and all that stuff. He just told me I needed to repent and confess my sins and, and uh, ask the Father to forgive me and to let Yeshua be my Lord and Savior. And then life goes on from there and stuff. And so uh, I also got something in my eye from earlier today and it hasn't gotten out yet. Acts 22, eight. There was a bright light that came on the desert road to Damascus. Paul said, who are you, Lord? And the bright light, the bright light said, I am Jesus, Yeshua of Nazareth. First of all, if you look at the accounts, think about this. Let's use some common sense. Paul had an encounter, a supernatural encounter with a bright light that claimed to be Yeshua, our Lord Jesus. He was blinded by that light. He was told to go someplace and somebody would tell him what he's supposed to do. And uh, if you really wanted to question or, or, or really wonder, I would think is his beginning testimony would, would be that, would make you question it, would have made me question it, but it didn't because I had the blinding eyes of the infallible and errant word of God. See, that, would, that just blinds you from what's being, being said and what's going on. And so when I was thinking of, we all know Joseph Smith who had a supernatural encounter and a bright light and a vision or whatever and words. And, and so, uh, I want to read something here that Paul shared in 2 Corinthians 11, 21 through 30. And I used to be impressed by this, but afterwards, and once I got to know more of Paul's character, and I actually studied him out in comparison with the Lord Jesus, then I really started to see him. The true Paul coming through. Paul says, to my shame, I must say, we were too weak for that. But what anyone else dares to boast of, I am speaking to cats. Uh, Dee Dee's sitting on the chair looking at me right now. No, go on. You're not getting up here. She's going to try to figure out how to jump up here. I am speaking as a fool. I also dare to boast of that. He's talking about the other apostles. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you. Are they offering offspring of Abraham? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I am a better one. I am talking like a madman with far greater labors for more imprisonments with countless beatings and often near death. Five times I received at the hand of the Jews the forty lashes minus one. Five times. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea. On frequent journeys in danger of rivers, danger of robbers, danger of my own people, danger of from Gentiles, danger at sea, he kind of covered that, danger from false brothers, in toil and hardship through my sleepless night, in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold exposure, apart from other things. These is the daily pressure on me of my anxiety for all the churches. Who is weak? I am not weak. Who is made to fall? I am not in indignant. <laughs> you little sucker. He's, he's going to try to get up here. If you boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. Why would Paul put himself through all that? Why? <laughs> you guys, I'm sorry. You'll have to... Come here, Dee Dee. See? What? This is our four-month-old kitten. She's just crazy. She hasn't, not old enough to get her front claws off or to get fixed yet. But Dee Dee is just, uh, she, she started out in our hand, didn't you? Didn't you? Yes. And so, uh, you're going to have to get out now. So, get. Sorry about that. But that's life around my house. But I want Paul to give you the reasons why. And some people will say, Marty, you're taking these out of context. Paul makes statements in or out of context that reveals who he is and his thoughts and his character. See, so you can say what you want about me, but that does not minimize what he's saying. 2 Corinthians 11.5 Indeed, I consider that I am not in the least inferior to these super apostles. One young man kept getting after me. He's giving him a compliment. He's giving him a compliment. I think it sounds like sarcasm to me. Colossians. This is a big one. Colossians 1 verses 24 through 26. Why would Paul put himself through all this? Now I, Paul, rejoice in my sufferings for the, your sake. And in my flesh, I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the same sake of his body that is the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God that given to me for you to make the word of God fully known, the mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to his saints. Paul had a separate gospel. He mixed it with Yeshua's gospel in order to get it to fly and pass. See, people always will give me verses that sound and are true, but they reject questioning the verses that also are untrue. Galatians 6.14 But far be it from me to boast except in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Why does Paul go through all this stuff? He thinks pretty highly of himself. Pride will drive you. It will drive you. Look at all the religions of the worlds. The Buddhists, the all the stuff. All, how many people have given their lives for their beliefs? How many people take lives for their beliefs? So Paul's no different. We are designed to worship and follow something. We are designed to believe in something, to give our lives to something. That's what everybody does. They even just selfishness. Oh, wow. thought I had that turned off. It's going to be one of those nights. 
That's what I don't like about these smartphones. Is it? And I turned the volume clear off, but it still ended up going on. <sighs> it's got to be one of these videos. Far from it to that. Second Corinthians, twelve seven. So to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelation. Oh my goodness. Paul believes that the bright light who claimed to be Jesus gave him a superior message over all the other apostles who spent three years with him. He is convinced that what he is teaching came from the bright light, which is Jesus Christ, his Jesus. A thorn of, of death was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me. If you look up the correct word, it is a messenger of Satan. Where do you think he got his power to do the stuff that he did for good and for bad, to blind people and to heal people? Do you think Satan would want to heal people if he could get them to follow him and be deceived, deceive the people? Heal them or break them. Either way, he just wants people to follow him. 1 Corinthians 9.2 if to others I am not an apostle. See, he knows the truth. He knows the qualifications based on what the other people, other apostles said. I am least, I at least I am to you, for you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. This next one is along the same line, 2 Corinthians 12, 2. He exposed a lot of stuff to the Corinthians that about himself. The signs of a true apostle were performed among you with utmost patience, signs, wonders, and mighty deeds. See, that is what the church is always looking for, signs and mighty deeds, and not truth. Truth as in righteousness. What the Father has said through the Torah, what the Father has said through the Son. See, I'm starting to see that. Even when uh, we talk about tongues and stuff, when it was pointed out to me and my eyes were open, I could see that the gift of tongues is another language helping other people to hear the message. It's not a jibber-jabber thing that makes you feel good and goes crazy because the, the devil can do the same thing. Galatians 1, verses 7b and number 8, and verse 8. Be some, be some that trouble you, there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. See, he's using all the same language, but it's his gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, that which we have preached unto you, let him be cursed. He doesn't realize that he's cursing himself because he's cursed. He is preaching a different gospel by an angel that was given to him. I mean, it's incredible. Paul claims his gospel came directly from Christ, who did not teach it to his own apostles. Acts 20, verse 24b, And the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. The guy gave his life zealously for what he believed and for through his supernatural events. And even when he was in the temple, when he was going to go talk in, to the apostles, and when he was gone for 14 years, what happened there? There's so many blanks in his testimony, so many things that are missing in Paul's testimony. Go back yourself and say, hey, if I believe what this guy says, and if I want to follow what this guy says, I want to know his testimony. I want to know his character. I want to know how and what he's doing. I always thought and was taught that the Jews were against him. They were, because he was teaching against the Torah. They were against Yeshua, our Lord Jesus, because he claimed to know the Father, or be God, or whatever it was. See? But he kept and obeyed, and Peter and all the others, the church grew. Everything grew because Yeshua came to clean up what Father had given for his people. First with the lost sheep of Israel, then with the Gentiles, which is all of us, the sojourners. So just think about the testimony of, of Paul, folks. Uh, one last question. I've had people ask me, well, why would God put the Bible? See, whenever people don't want to study or accept something, they blame, why would God put that in the Bible? 
Why would God deceive us? Why would God? It's, he's testing us. He's always tested us. He's tested everybody all the time, everywhere. He doesn't have a crystal ball. Like people say, he, oh, he sees the future and oh, he's going to do this. No. Time is eternal. It is eternal. It will always go. It might change from days and nights to weeks or whatever, one day, but a thousand years to the Lord. It's, it, but as it, it's, it's in contrast, I mean, I've been eternal. He's always going to be eternal. He's always going to do things. And my proof of that is, is Satan in heaven right now? No, he was kicked out of heaven. So there was a period of time when he was an angel in heaven, and now there's an angel that he's not. So are you saying heaven is not in or out of time? See, the word eternal is continuous. I forget what the Hebrew word was. Um, perpetual duration. Perpetual duration. It's like an atomic sub. It just goes and goes and goes and will not stop going. And the only reason we know of days and nights and time is because of the rotation of the earth. Yes, you heard me say that right. The rotation of the earth around the sun. If you look at that clearly, that is what Father did to do that. The earth does not move. It stays spinning on its axis reliably and doing what it's supposed to do. Praise the Lord. He's that great of a God. He's a greater God than throwing a frisbee out there and letting it hang in the middle of nowhere. He's a great God. He can create all the universe and all the planets spinning. And you know, guys, honestly, the conspiracy and all the countries who hate each other, somebody would give it up if the earth was really flat. But there's very few See, and so uh, that's a whole other topic, but I, I want to take a stand on that because the scriptures are that Bible verse that people use is really vague. It's, it can go either way, you know. And so uh, the whole, I guess it's one of the, you know, you, you say that you trust the scripture, but yet you don't trust the scripture because. You don't look up those things. You don't search those things out to find out. You've got 200 some verses that supposedly back it up. And I've looked at pages and pages more than that from different people. And how many of you believed in Paul for a long time and found out that he's wrong and he's in scripture? You thought he, you had it all. I thought I had it all figured out. I had the gospel all figured out. I was out preaching and teaching and doing all that stuff. I was going to work my way right up the ladder like all the other good Christians are supposed to do. But uh, I'm here now, and I'm going to another viewing tomorrow of another friend that passed away. I guess he died of cancer. He was 81. So just talked to him. seemed like a few weeks or a month or so ago, standing out in his driveway on a nice warm day in the middle of winter and talking. And so uh, time is short. Time is short. And so we need to seek the Father and his wisdom. Thank you, Father, so much for this. I pray that you'll encourage people and help people. And Lord, I pray that you will rise up a church that will be, that we, I, will be a living example to others of following the things in the Torah that are for us that we need to follow as sojourners. Help us to love, but yet be bold. Help us to have swords and willing to take a stand and not back down because we're afraid we're going to lose a friend. But you want to help that friend. In Yeshua's name, amen.